wash my soul in the ocean in the tears of God I let it go Hello my astrology friends around the world this is Lada from astrolada.com and we're talking today about the change of signs of the nodes of the moon also known as Rahu and Ketu it's pivotal time when the signs of the moon change, which happens every 18 months, year and a half, the karmic lessons in our lives and the fate that events in our lives also change. The notes of the moon are so important in astrology, actually in ancient Vedic astrology, they were more important than Saturn, Jupiter and the other planets because they have the meaning of our life, the past karma, south note of the moon and the future karma the north node of the moon actually they're not even planets south node and north node of the moon are two points in skies where the orbit of the sun crosses the orbit of the moon the two lights in our sky and as you know the moon is connected to the past the sun to the future and the north part where they are in the north part of the ecliptic where they cross is the north node which is a bit like a spring energy where something bursts to life physically. It's very physical and material manifestation whenever the North Node happens. There is like a little renaissance, spring excitement, just like in the spring, many people feel so much excited and full of life and full of sexual desire even. <laughs> the Rahu has the same energy wherever it goes. It makes us very passionate, excited. There is a boom of material development, uh, and experimentation and willingness to try something new there. But also ra recklessness, right? With the negative side is where we can be reckless and even obsessed. We'll talk about that for the age of the 12 signs. And the South Node has more the energy of autumn when everything is dying. In ancient astrology, is the planet of loss, of losing something, of letting go of something. Uh, and detachment, you know, maybe a lot of people around autumn start feeling a bit you know, either a bit more down or a bit more detached and they start to go more introverted, introspective, whatever the north, the south node Ketu goes, we become more introspective, there is more material losses that happen or we let go of things, things that have finished having a, the spark for us in their life and we just don't want it anymore. But it does have a connotation of losing something. But even though north node is a, a materially planet of losses, or point of losses, it's a point of spiritual gain. And as you'll see, the South Node has very strong affinity with Scorpio, and the Scorpio is the sign of death and also spiritual liberation, so we'll speak about that as well. But uh, yeah, let's see uh, how they're gonna affect first the world, speaking generally, the world events that we can expect, how I interpret it, and then on a personal level for each of the 12 signs, especially the ascendant signs are very important. And you can look especially from the moon signs as well, because these are the nodes of the moon. And um, let's start with... Oh, I just want to tell you that just for a few days, uh, I'm doing a discount on my 2022 videos. For each of the 12 signs, each video is two and a half hours long. And it's very detailed, month by month, what will happen for you in my own style. If you like how I teach, how I talk, you'll probably enjoy those. These are my best-selling videos. And also my 2022 calendar, which is uh, down from $30 to $20, to 130 pages of all the astrological events that are going to happen in 2022. The invisible planets, visible and so on. Okay, now let's start. The nodes of the moon are changing from Gemini, where Raku was for the next one and a half year, and it's changing from this, from January 2022, from around the 19th. So for the last year and a half, Raku was in Gemini, and we probably saw that there was an explosion of social media, news, everyone was online, Gemini rules all of those things. People got a bit addicted, not a bit, a lot addicted. Even education became online because Raku is a planet that also rules technologies. And now it's going to move into Taurus for the next year and a half. While Ketu is always the opposite point, remember it's an axis. It's moving from the sign of Sagittarius, where it weakens travel, where it's Sagittarius rules travel, international, higher education, universities, you know, all of those things. And our belief systems, they crashed, you know. 
and um, judiciary system and the laws. I mean, the laws are changing all the time for the last year and a half. People don't know what is right and wrong anymore, which is the area of Sagittarius that came to weaken. But it gave us a lot of spiritual beliefs, more spiritual beliefs, because Ketu spiritualizes whatever it goes to. It spiritualizes our beliefs, even though it pulverized and we excreted many old beliefs about what reality is, about what's happening in the world, who is ruling the world or whatever, you know, or your ideals for the future. Maybe they changed a lot in the last year and a half collectively. And of course, I can't show you Ketu because I've lost it, Ketu. <laughs> Very typical because Ketu is something that you can lose or hide, so I've lost it. So, Ketu is moving into Scorpio. And according to ancient Vedic astrology, Ketu is one of the signs that, one of the points that is most attuned to um, <clears throat> Scorpio. It's almost like rule Scorpio in Vedic astrology. Because Ketu is about loss. And so is Scorpio about death, about letting go and big transformations and detachment from material things as well. So Ketu will help us a lot with this. But let's see on the material level what will happen. Of course, whatever Rahu goes, the North Node, we can see big innovations in that sphere for the next year and a half. And of course, Taurus is money and Uranus is there, which is innovation. I believe that within a year and a half, There'll be a new currency that appears that will be global or something like you see where the world is going. That's the plan anyway. This is when it will be implemented. Uh, there will be new currency, digital, because Raku is anything technological, digital. And it will be, um, it will happen quite fast, quite suddenly. And of course, I mean, like the old financial system can crash. Raku and the North Node together in 2022, 2023. With Uranus, it's like some sudden change that comes and very sudden solutions that are introduced. And of course, Rahu has the negative connotation that it's something that has, um, because Rahu's lower vibration, it's a demonic entity in Vedic astrology, which is very selfish um, reasons. It has very selfish motivations. They can be like a hidden selfish motivations there for the introduction of new monetary system, but it is what it is. It is coming new way of money, new way of making money for some of you as well. Um, on another level, uh, Taurus is also rules um, food. And I even spoke in my 2022 video that there'll be innovations in food. And wherever Raku goes, we become very passionate about this area of life. So you'll see on the news everywhere, they'll be talking about food the resources, uh, food the supply, and uh, putting a lot of attention on all of this. And they'll try and find new ways of creating food, which are more technocratic, more technological, maybe like, um, you know, because Uranus is also there, the planet of huge technological developments with Raku innovations. They're talking about people, you know, changing the way we eat. And the negative side of Raku is maybe introducing a lot of artificial things grown in laboratories by scientists or, you know, inventions. I don't know, they're talking about bugs or stem cell meats and, you know, which are not so natural foods. Raku is more artificial energy rather than natural. So that's one of the darker sides we can expect and that there'll be a big shift towards such things. But of course, this energy can be used by the light forces as well, especially on a personal level, because planetary energy is the best use on a personal level. And that will be for a lot of us to change our eating habits and to become very conscious and very passionate about how we eat. Uh, I mean, like some kind of gluttony can appear on some levels, but on other levels, and food addictions, but on a higher vibration of Raku is like becoming super interested where our food is coming from, producing it ourselves. A lot of people getting into food production, gardens, growing fruits, whatever, you know, sustainable living, people becoming passionate about those things for in a house. Boom, especially if you're in a career that you're teaching sustainable living, sustainable energy, sustainable food resources, it will be huge growth probably of your business as well. I'm sorry. Rahu in Taurus also indicates very likely the rise of prices of food because Rahu, because Rahu is something that can rise suddenly that indicates inflation. And we're seeing it already. Even before Rahu has entered into Taurus in the last few months, 
there is inflation about any kind of produce, not only food, but everything. Taurus rules everything that comes from the earth above. And Scorpio, the opposite sign, where the south node is situated, will be situated for a year and a half, is everything under the ground. Scorpio is underground, Taurus is above ground. So, oh, fruits, vegetables, uh, food of any source that, that and any resources that come above the ground, like wood material and uh, stones and I know anything for building that comes from above the ground, the prices of those things will be rising because of rising inflation. Well, everything that is from below under the ground, which is ruled by Scorpio, where Ketu will be the south node, which weakens whatever sign it goes into and whatever it rules, will probably lose some of its value. What comes under the ground? Maybe prices of petrol or maybe prices of uh, materials from under the ground like gas, coals, or there will be weakening of any such kind of industries connected from things that come from under the ground. Maybe, I don't know, some diamond industries and such things. But precious stones, probably they're digging them from under the ground. Uh, so such things will lower their value, but especially, you know, those kind of gases, coals and so on. Um, Scorpio also rules nuclear energy. One of the things, because when uh, nuclear energy was discovered, Pluto was just discovered as well. So we've always co colorated uh, and, and nuclear energy to Pluto uh, because it also has incredible destructive force, just like Pluto does in Scorpio. <laughs> and it's invisible though, you know, the atomic energy is on the atomic level, is invisible, like the planet Pluto, which is <laughs> tiny, invisible, somewhere at the end of our so solar system. But it has incredible power, so maybe something will happen with weakening of the whole nuclear, maybe like even uh, Trifon Nikolov says uh, that there might be some kind of nuclear crisis that develops, which leads to maybe reducing more the nuclear energy that we use and so on. Um, so yes, the value of Taurus things will rise, uh, plants, food, trees, food, things that we manufacture from such things. Uh, well, the value of Scorpio things and all Scorpionic industries can weaken. Well, uh, there is a good side to Ketu in Scorpio, though, because Scorpio rules some of the very mafia-like organizations. Um, funny enough, Scorpio rules the IRS or uh, Inland Revenue, whatever you call it, the taxation office, and it rules the mafia, and it rules any kind of um, institutions that by force are trying to make people do things like the military, for example, uh, because, you know, everywhere where there is force and coercion of some sort, uh, there is Scorpio energy there. So there will be, with K to D, there might be a crisis in such institutions, crisis in institutions connected to uh, taxes, crisis in, in, in inheritance, uh, sorry, insurance companies are also Scorpio. Uh, so there might be, and you can see already a lot of insurance companies are saying uh, in the last few months that they are they, they might have a bankruptcy or something because there's so many claims of people coming to them because of injuries and so on and because of uh, in, inability to work, inability to, you know, because of health issues and so on. But I expect some weakening of insurance companies, of taxation companies, of banks, Scorpio rules banks, because Scorpio rules all mutual resources, where people pull together resources, put them together, other people's money, especially getting loans, there might be some kind of a crisis there, weakening of that system, you know, and uh, if you've invested your money in any kind of a pooled resources, if it's a hedge fund, if it's a pension, if it's a... Uh, something where you, you know, you give money to the government and hope that they'll give it back to you as a pension or something like that, or in some kind of stock markets is Scorpio as well, where pooled resources from different sources come together. So I expect Keto to weaken all such institutions, all such, uh, you know, Scorpionic stock markets, um, pension funds, um, hedge funds, inheritance funds, taxes and taking loans and, 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 and crisis in banking and possible. 
cannot tell you where exactly it can happen. We have to look at the triggers of the next year and a half, but for me it's happening like the whole, it's the access, the fated events that are happening, Rahu Ketu is happening on the access of money, whether it's your own savings, Taurus, or uh, money that you've put in uh, banks and uh, with uh, other people, Scorpio, there, there will be, you know, some big fated developments there. And uh, another thing that Scorpio rules is the cabal, <laughs> the deep state, anything that is hidden and exerts control over others, the mafia as well. Uh, so I hope there will be weakening in such um, institutions, so call them whatever you want, such formations. Um, there will be, Ketu removes barriers of every sort as well. So maybe there will be a removal of the facade that those corporations or those institutions carry um, and uh, that it's kind of the true face can come out in some way and, and weakening overall such institutions. Um, also, any kind of hidden money, Scorpio, whether it's in the Bahamas, in offshore, whatever, again, there might be an attack or kind of a weakening of the possibility to do that, to hidden money, whether you're a big corporation or whether you're uh, the average Joe that is not declaring certain money for taxes, there might be a way that you will not be able after the next year and a half that passes with Ketu there to, to have like those safe havens for hidden money or undeclared money of some sort. It can hit big companies, but the small person as well. Um, the one interesting thing though is that we have to always look when the nodes are changing signs, where the rulers of the two signs they're going to move into. And they're moving in Taurus and Scorpio. Scorpio is ruled by Pluto and Taurus is ruled by Venus. And lo and behold, in January 2022, when Venus, when this, the nodes are changing signs, Venus and Pluto are both in Capricorn, which means that, yes, they'll move down the months, you know, Venus especially, but uh, whatever sign there are at the moment that the nodes change sign, it carries an imprint of what the energies of those fated changes of the eclipses of Rahu and Ketu will be for the next year and a half. They'll carry a taste of Capricorn, not just a taste. They will be all triggered by Capricorn. And one of the things that Capricorn rules is governments. <clears throat> so all of those fated events that we see in the changes with the monetary system, um, in the changes with the food, in the changes with the... Uh, banks and uh, institutions that are connected to taxation, the taxing system will change somehow. Um, uh, all of those things that are connected to <clears throat> even the, the uh, uh, rising of certain prices and falling down of other prices, there will be all kind of government control. You know, it's, it's something because of rules of certain regulations, of certain laws that are taken, because Capricorn is the is is what rules the nodes, you know. So you see, it's it's very. I can say like the government will cause all those things, or I can say that the the laws that are taken will cause this thing. Uh, but on a more psychological level, what does it mean? All those changes of the way we eat, of what we value. Taurus is big changes that come in what our value system is. It will change our taste, our preferences for fashion, for music, for art, Taurus is all of those. And Rahu changes those things, revolutionizes them, brings uh, like a new trends, new fads there, let's say. Rahu is the planet of fads and trends. Um, in anything connected to Taurus, music, art, food, dressing, luxury industry, the pleasures that we enjoy, there is a big change that's going to happen that will change our values in those directions. But it will be towards more Capricornian values because the ruler is in Capricorn, towards more traditional, to going back to, and especially Venus is retrograde when the nodes change sign. You know, so maybe going back to something that used to work in the past. Plus Capricorn is a lot about learning to live with less, uh, our values becoming more modest, you know, uh, Taurus's values, but Capricorn is more traditional, more modest, so learning to kind of restrict ourselves with our eating habits, to make them more simple, more streamlined, more, mm, 
not so many frills and so many indulgences there. Uh, and to be honest, because this cycle will carry on for 19 years. Rahu transits Taurus once every 19 years, the North Node. So for the next 19 years, this energy of more constriction when it comes to Taurian things of food and taste and fashion and what is um, how we enjoy ourselves, Taurus, uh, will go towards some kind of regulation uh, by governments, towards some kind of um, uh, constricting, tightening, or more personal responsibilities. And Taurus rules our resources. So over the next 19 years, there'll be a huge trend everywhere uh, about learning responsibility about our resources on one side is really great because, uh, for example, we'll try to be more responsible how we eat, we'll try to limit, and it will be much easier for the next 19 years. If you see it everywhere like a trend. Remember till the last 20 years, how it was, you know, actually what was considered the goddess for showing people jet setting eating black caviar having this indulgent mansions like the, the the really the big side of taurus is like go all out luxury you know uh the most expensive things but now this new cycle of rahu in taurus which will carry on for 19 years it's just one year and a half long it stay, but till it comes back again to introduce new trends, the North Node in Taurus will be another 19 years. So the next 19 years, what will become more trendy is people showing that they're living with less, that their values are more traditional, that they can limit their consumption, limit their resources, that, you know, and, and it will feel so outdated and irrelevant looking at luxury, at those luxury things that, you know, they're all over on TV, selling sunsets or whatever, or <laughs> the Kardashians. Uh, our values will totally change towards, again, to, towards Taurus's values, but through Capricorn to way more, and Venus is with Pluto, to way more control, to way more self-regulated, way more recycling tor uh, tor Capricorn is a, a lot about taking something old and recycling it towards limiting your energy consumption and so on but it can also be used to control people through the resources that they're using limitation of how much food you can have how much fruit and vegetable how much meat how much uh, clothes are available for you I won't be surprised it's not may I don't know if within the next year and a half but definitely within that cycle of uh, the, you know, Rahu in Taurus, which is 19 years, if they won't be rationing for those Taurian things, uh, something that we consider normal commodities or luxuries of everyday life, uh, that they'll be rationing of, of the foods, rationing of, of the clothes, of energy that we're using, and so on. Um, <laughs> interesting times. But uh, the Ketu uh, ruler, Pluto, and Ketu is weakening the sign of Scorpio, is going to be also in Capricorn, which means any big changes that are happening with those Scorpio institutions that we talked about, like insurance companies, tax taxation around the world, uh, loans, banks, will be strictly regulated by governments and there will be restriction there again, restriction of loans, of ability to access pooled money or resources or even stock markets with a video and kind of uh, maybe they might be caused by the governments, all such kind of big Scorpio changes that we're seeing. Um, also inheritance is a Scorpio. A lot of people might lose, as I said, Ketu is the energy that you lose something material. They might lose their inheritance. Um, it's a possibility, you know, I'm not saying everyone will do it, but it's gonna, you, we're gonna see it like a big trend somehow. Um, what else is that? Another good thing is that uh, Scorpio is the fear of death. And Ketu though can remove barriers to death, so we can see more death happening. But at the same time, psychologically, we can see people detaching from the fear of death and, and not being so fearful about death, uh, going through death, but loss through death can trigger detachment to the fear of death. That's what I've written here. That's how I see it working, you know. So people are not going to feel so dramatic or overwhelmed 
plus some of the drama will be drained out. Scorpio is a very dramatic sign um, that is run by fear and desire for survival. And Ketu will drain some of those very primitive feelings there from Scorpio and make us detach from those intense feelings within ourselves. Maybe that's welcome, you know. Um, and also Scorpio is very strong desires, obsessive, compulsive, addictive desires. So on a spiritual level, this will be a fantastic time that Ketu can empty and help us detach from some very powerful desires we have. Do you have, are you someone that is addicted to cigarettes? Are you someone who is addicted to sex, to porn, to... It can be anything, anything that has control over you and that you're doing obsessively and hiddenly almost. Um, and, and that is, it's a kind of, you know, there's something darker and taboo about it. Well, Ketu will allow en masse many people to release such attachment. It will weaken the desires of Scorpio um, that can make us very, uh, very addicted to something. So good luck, you know, that might be a great time for, I'm seeing a lot of healing happening, a lot of spiritual healing on the material level. South Node Ketu is always gives problems, and I told you in which areas I saw it might happen. Um, but on a uh, on, on a very on a spiritual level, that's the biggest blessing that can happen. And because Ketu is a Moksha planet, Moksha means to be liberated spiritually. So is Scorpio. Um, it's actually the most difficult signs are signs of spiritual liberation, like Pisces, Scorpio, and Cancer, the three water signs. So we have a liberation planet, spiritual liberation and spiritual liberation sign. There will be like an opening for healing. Opening of healing and Scorpio is where we keep the traumas deep down in our body. You know, like each cell carries trauma, not just from this past lifetime, but from other past lifetime, from buried memories of the soul. And they get uh, into the body. In the cells start vibrating with this trauma and we unlock diseases or we trigger, the, the, these traumas trigger those diseases. So I expect like kind of a healing, uh, miraculous healing happening en masse. Maybe you've carried the disease for a long time or a health condition or a mental health condition that was, that you're not even sure where it's coming from. Uh, that's been, you might even think it's genetic or it's chronic or whatever and, and you just learn to live with it, but it's actually caused by deep, pain within you, in your cellular level, some trauma that you don't even remember. Well, Ketu transiting Scorpio can unlock that and empty. Remember, Ketu is the tail of the dragon in ancient astrology where you empty. It's, it's the anus, so it's Scorpio. Scorpio rules the anus, Ketu rules the tail of the dragon where the anus is. So you have a Dava Wami detoxing influence of toxic feelings here and releasing and with this release, it might be even a subconscious process you're not aware of and suddenly you're healed from some physical disease, from some physical health state, from some long-carried mental and psychological and emotion, emotional pain that you've been carried, that you release. Um, another thing that it says in ancient texts is that Ketu removes the effects of a snake bite and illness arising out of the poison, poisonous matter entering one's body. And I'm thinking if people feel like they've been poisoned by something, uh, vaccines or whatever it is, or any kind of illnesses, healing from the, they might be healing, possibility for healing and detoxing very powerfully because ancient text says Ketu removes the effect, the effects of the snake bite and the illnesses arising out of the poisonous matter entering one's body. So a lot of illnesses that are due to poisonous matter, whether it's toxicity in your environment, from chemtrails or from poisonous um, psychological environment, emotional environment, like abusive environment, Ketu will help release those. That's why I'm telling you a lot of spontaneous healings. Or if you've had some kind of poisoning by uh, nowadays, a lot of the you know that medi medicine, conventional medicine, is the second biggest cause of death. <laughs> it's not a, a mistake with conventional. It's not um, something, some disease or whatever. It's medicine. So the effects on some poisons in ourselves, 
um, can be released. And again, I think also I can, I see a lot of people maybe giving up bad habits as well, poisons that they put in their body, detaching from this obsession with this, from the emotional attachment to that. Um, of course, Scorpio is the sign of sexuality. And especially the darker side of it, if there was some sexual misconduct, Keto will kind of give the passing there because Keto is a very karmic planet. It gives the karmic results of past misdeeds of sexual, of sexual conduct or sexual misconduct. You'll see a lot of people who are cheating or who are having unhealthy sexual life, like, you know, uh, over abusing the sexual energy. For example, if you have too much sex, it's again an abuse of the sexual energy. Uh, they'll see repercussions for that. They'll see a weakening of, of, of health. They'll see a certain effects in their life because of past sexual or continuing sexual misconduct. On another level, people that have sexual traumas, you know, many people, maybe every second, third person, second or third person has some sexual trauma will feel a healing from it, because Keto can release that poison, that pain from it. Plus, I see a lot of psychological breakthroughs. Keto in its own sign to release Scorpio rules, psychology, the deep buried traumas. Um, I think a lot of people will really benefit with being with a psychologist, or even without that, just delving into some kind of a self-introspection, because Keto is very introspective, about their own motivation, about their own hidden... Um, feelings and desires that have a powerful breakthrough almost like intuitively without it will come Ketu doesn't think too much it, it fills it with the body it just has a body and there will be a release through the body so first if you start seeing a lot of detoxing kind of uh, worsening of your health like uh, flu-like symptoms or kind of a cysts and rashes or uh, overwhelming feelings first coming in it's almost like the release of those po the poisons in your emotional astral and physical body it's like a detox process have you heard of the die off effect if you're detoxing from candido poisons it first gets worse uh, and and it, the poisons need to come to the surface there is some healing crisis that happens and then you're free so I expect to see a lot of those things in many people happen Plus, Scorpio rules the chakras, the seven chakras, all openings on the body, whether it's the anus, whether it's uh, the other invisible openings in the body, uh, where it is, there is an exchange of energy with the other sources. So these are the seven chakras. In you know, the Kundalini is depicted by a snake, which is a very scorpionic image. And Ketu removes barriers to this. That's why it's a very... Mm, initiation combination south node in Ketu, uh, Ketu sorry south node in Scorpio I, I know I, I think that there will be some spontaneous uh, access to higher realms uh, unlocking up uh, your chakras your psychic abilities astral travel Ketu is the planet of astral travel in Scorpio <laughs> the sign that rules uh, the openings in the body the chakras you know so there might be, especially people that are uh, spiritually prepared, that are more active with meditation or more introspective, they can have mystical experiences or kind of like very transformative healing, spiritual, <laughs> deep initiative experiences, so to speak. Okay, so, you know, it is a worldly malefic, but spiritual benefit. So the spiritual benefits will be incredible. Losing the fear of death for some of you. Losing some of you because they would experience um, near death in a sense. They might see the other side. Especially if you have out-of-body experience, you're not going to be afraid of death anymore because you see it's actually a release. <laughs> and that's where the real life starts. But okay, that's, that's going to be but a kind of like a massive revival that I see on a spiritual level. And occult secrets get removes barriers to occult knowledge, to occult secrets. I think people will be downloading secret information and deep insights without even researching. It's kind of, it, it, it just comes in them. They'll fill it with their body. But now let's focus a little bit sign by sign how it is going to affect each of the 12 signs. 
I would advise you to check your ascendant sign, also your moon sign, because the north and south node, they're the lunar nodes. So you notice a big influence if you take your moon sign and listen to the nodes. Also, the sun sign is always important. Uh, for the last 2000 years, the sun sign becomes more and more prevalent because we become more free human beings because the sun is the free will. Human beings have very little free, free will due recently, you know, uh, and that's the sun sign, that's why it's becoming more important, but the ascendant first, the moon and the sun. So if you're an Aries, sun, moon or ascendant, the north node is moving into your second house in Taurus, while the south node gets you into your eighth house. For you, as an Aries, and I'm an Aries, there can be, you know, increase of opportunities to make money from new resources, because Rahu brings material results, and it might be very sudden uh, ways, like suddenly you can find a new way of bringing income or a new way, a new place to invest money that is very different than anything you've done before. Because Rahu is something very innovative, very different. You might get into very innovative currencies like cryptocurrencies. I'm an Aries, who knows? <laughs> From the next few months, you might be paying me with Bitcoins <laughs> or something, introducing it to the website. You might get into such kind of a new technologies about money, you might get very passionate and excited about money or about learning about money, about learning about resources, but you might get very passionate and excited about other second house things like food, uh, like growing food, like uh, gardening, like uh, um, cooking, like preparing meals or experimenting with foods. If you're someone that is very stubborn about what they eat, I think Hugh Hefner was an Aries, as well, but he would always eat the same things <laughs> every day for all his life, you know. But now with Rako in your second house for a year and a half, you might actually uh, really try a different diet, something you've never done before, really make some fated changes. And because I told you the ruler of your second house, Taurus, will be in Capricorn, there will be a tendency towards ability to restrict yourself more with those new food choices that you make to limit yourself somehow more. Um, and I hope it's not poor or nutritional um, choices that you make, that, but that they're more responsible. But again, as I said, increase and even fascination and obsession with resources and money and assets and uh, beautiful, anything connected to beautiful, gaining valuables, maybe getting a new wardrobe that you'll look very different over the next year and a half to experiment with. Maybe really changing, uh, you know, the, the collections, getting new collections. Is, is it the books? Is it the whatever it is, like starting to collect something or, you know, or starting to grow your food or such kind of things. Uh, getting very much into resources and to things connected to nature as well. Oh, and, and then Keto will be in your eighth house. So if you're Aries, you might have to, there might be some losses that come to you from if you have mutual investments with your partner, for some people it might mean a financial support that they've been relying on, maybe a salary from their partner, or maybe some kind of a stipend from the government. It might disappear, but only so you can find new ways to be more self-sufficient and support yourself and to be more self-reliant financially with Raku in the second house. Raku will find new ways that you might have to release um, what, some kind of dependence on another, whether it's psychological, emotional, but especially material. There might be a weakening of the finances, or money that's coming to you from others can be less, uh, you know, if you're relying on a partnership with others, or money that comes to you from some collaboration might weaken, uh, or if you have some insurances or inheritances, or um, some kind of a... Uh, something connected to taxes, there can be a weakening of such matters in your life, that there's some losses through such things. So if you have money invested in stocks, money invested in some kind, some hidden money or some kind of um, uh, connected to insurance, connected to um, pension funds, you know, there might be some losses through such things. But again, for you, Aries, there is a deep psychological release of traumas, 
I've heard from this lifetime and past lifetimes spontaneous healings that everything that I was talking about before that happened through Ketu in Scorpio. And uh, so you need to release something that uh, it comes to you from others so you can create new search and your values will change what you consider beautiful, attractive, valuable, that definitely your pace will change. Maybe even your face will somehow change with Rahu. Rahu can even indicate some kind of surgical intervention, so big changes to your face or I don't know, <laughs> some, some augmentations or enhancements of your face. Uh, maybe making it more alluring, you know, Rahu is sexy. Okay, uh, and by the way, if you'd like uh, to listen to my 2022 video horoscopes, they're discounted for a few days um, with 30% for each of the 12 signs and they're two and a half hours each on my 2022 calendar for the whole year ahead, uh, which is 120 pages, is discounted just for a week down to 30%. If you're Taurus Sun Moon Rising, now the biggest changes, some of the biggest changes will be happening for you, Taurus, because the eclipses caused by the North and South Node will be happening in your sign and the opposite sign over the next year and a half. And because Raku is in your first house, it means that there will be some kind of augmentation, that there will be more light, there will be more focus on you, while South Node will be in the seventh house, which means that you might lose support from someone. You might let go of certain people in your life, but especially if it's such that are toxic, because Ketu will remove the toxic. Remember what Ketu does? It removes the effects of poisonous matter in our life. And if it's coming to you from your environment, from close people, whether it's business partners or clients or your personal partner, you know, you, you might, the universe or you might decide to let go of such aggravation and the drama that comes through such people. For some of it might be more intense loss, like a divorce or someone leaving your life, important in your life. But it's gonna be feel like liberation and release because the North Node, the South Node is a liberating Moksha planet. Or there might be a weakening of the positions of your partner, for example, uh, whether it's their health or their business or the focus on your partner. Uh, might be weakened because you have to focus on yourself. Rahu sucks out all the attention towards your goals. If it's your sun sign here towards your career, your goals, your ambitions, that's why you can't pay as much attention to others. Or if you're someone who always will take into consideration the needs of your partners or of others first, now things will reverse. You'll learn over the next year and a half what it is to prioritize your goals, your needs, <clears throat> your dreams uh, while kind of saying you know kind of like mm, not releasing you know trying to please others in some way so it has good effects as well Raku can also make you very focused on becoming independent oftentimes sometimes I'll see when someone divorces with this position so they learn to be independent which is what the first house is uh, and they change their appearance as well, they change their path in life, uh, but they let go of relationships. Well, it's not necessarily to mean a divorce or anything like that, you know. Many people pass through it. Sometimes it can mean that just a relationship or support from another goes away or the relationship steps back a little bit so you can focus on yourself. Sometimes a person becomes very passionate about their physical appearance. They start working out when Raku transit, especially the ascendant sign, if you're a Taurus ascendant. And the sun and moon too, to, to a lesser degree. Uh, or <clears throat> you can notice that you become kind of, uh, you really want to really enhance and improve uh, and, and physically develop your appearance, your looks and so on. But the focus is on you, it's on independence, it, it's on learning to be on your own or to do things alone. And if you're looking for support from others, you might find yourself that you experience certain losses. If you're trying, if you've always worked in a partnership, now you might notice that you're dissatisfied with that, or that uh, partnering with others creates more kind of, um, let's say, losses rather than gains for you in some way. But on another level, you can meet new people, yes, but there will be more of a Ketu nature. So even new love or new relationships come into your life, or new clients, or new very close relationships, 
or other people, they'll have a Ketu nature, which means they'll be of more spiritual nature. It can also Ketu means something from the past. Someone from the past can come back in your life. Or it might be someone from a past lifetime that owes you something and it needs to be completed and they need to give you some support or some you need to give to them and they to them some spiritual whatever uh, repayment and you complete that cycle or someone that actually from your life now that you remember <laughs> that comes from uh, the past and comes back into your life you know um, but also you might decide to uh, release certain obligations to other people. I don't know, it's a co is it, whether it's a contract, whether it's an uh, engagement of some sort that you have towards another person, or collaboration, that you might be done with those and you release them and they, they fizzle out so you can focus on something you do on your own. Now, if you're Gemini, the North Node goes into your 12th house, and the South Node, I'll use another planet for the South Node, which one? This one. And the South Node will be in your 6th house. What does it mean for you? Wherever Raku goes, we become very passionate about that. Well, Raku will be going into your 12th house. You might become very passionate about um, foreign travel. Some people even relocate when Raku is in the 12th house. They travel the world, they go to exotic places. Raku gives them access to places they've never had before. They've never been to before. Uh, others, really, their imagination and their internal life becomes very vivid and full of desires. Raku is full of desires. Some of you might just have a very raunchy dreams because 12 house rules dreams. You might start dreaming and in your, in your dream, seeing what your deepest desires are because Raku is very much desire-driven. Um, while uh, others might actually, the imagination might be very kind of stimulated. And if you're someone who is a writer, poet, uh, someone who, I don't know, anything that uses the imagination, a designer or graphic designer, this is the 12th house. Raku will really stimulate you and actually can have a great sudden rise at, uh, in your career as a, anything creative, anything uh, in, that uses the imagination. If you're in, in another 12th house career, like uh, in medical careers, in the healing arts, in spirituality of any sorts, in mystical teaching or psychology, or if you work in foreign, you know, travel of some sort, or foreign import, export, this Raku can give you material gains through such things, through such 12th house things like a foreign investments, for example, or you can gain something and new experiences in being in foreign countries, or you can gain by foreign import, export, you can gain through uh, something, invest you can get very passionate about spiritual research, you can get very passionate about uh, examining mysteries and secrets of some sorts uh, or your own spirituality or examining your own subconscious you can get very passionate about psychology or working with the psychologists or astrologers of some sort to examine those secrets of the invisible world of the 12th house or if you just happen to have a business that is 12th house you know maybe you make uh, meditation videos on youtube or maybe you make uh, some healing sounds or you know anything 12th house or just music for someone again you expect kind of a blossoming a spring in that area of your life or some of you can just have a bigger ba be bedroom <laughs> because the 12th house rules bathrooms and bedrooms where we go into our private thing <laughs> or where we sleep so you might just expand the bedroom bathroom <laughs> something like that but at the same time the south node will be in your okay one thing though it can really Raku can really spur your imagination into some kind of fears that are not really real because it stimulates uh, the Raku is also the reptilian brain which creates the fears going to the 12th house of the subconscious and the imagination you might find yourself plagued by certain fears or even addictions 12th house is one of the houses connected to uh, escapist behaviors that Raku can amplify and increase. So if you're Gemini, just be a bit more careful. 
because your desire, for example, to drink or to whatever hidden vices you have can amplify, can intensify, even become obsessive, at least at the beginning. And hopefully this can bring awareness to you and you can make something really new there to change those patterns of uh, addictiveness or of self-sabotaging behaviors because Rako also allows to for intervention of some sort to break to break through old patterns introduce something new that can some kind of a substitute to those self-sabotaging or addictive behaviors to experiment with something new to be willing to look out of the frame the normal frame of things and to try something different but initially there might be amplifications of such let's say hidden behaviors even uh, affairs, 12 counts is uh, the enemy of the marriage or committed relationship because it's the 6th from the 7th. Rahu in the 12 sometimes can coincide with an affair or with some kind of hidden desires or hidden yearnings for someone and very hidden passions, you know, uh, desires. Another way to counteract that is maybe to do some role playing because Rahu wants something new. And 12th house in ancient astrology is one of the houses of your sex life because it rules the bedroom and hidden pleasures, escaping reality. Sex is one of the ways to do that, especially if it's more, you know, kind of merging with another. Well, instead of doing it through porn, because Rahu can intensify such things or through an illicit relationship, you can do some role playing with your partner where you introduce something where you, you know, where you try some new things with your partner, you know. You try some new bed pleasures, you experiment. Rock is a planet of experimentation. Uh, then the south node will be in your sixth house, Gemini. It can weaken the area of work. For some of you, it can mean that Rahu opens up here opportunity not to work for a bit, to travel, to take, to take holidays more, to be more focused on uh, exploring the soul and internally yourself psychologically or towards exploring having a, or towards traveling or towards taking it easy and having a break becoming part or meditating more <laughs> you know uh, while relinquishing and letting go of some respons worldly responsibilities because the sixth house is the humdrum of everyday life the errands that we have to do the to keep the house clean and tidy the job responsibilities we have responsibilities towards employees or towards our children and family, all kind of those things that we have to do to maintain our life, but that are kind of a chore. It's like a servant house. Every Everything that you serve, all the, you know, such duties and responsibilities to make things running, to keep the machine well oiled, let's say, you might kind of lose interest towards such things for a little bit. In extreme case, you can become a bit of a slob. Abandon some of your healthy routines <laughs> or abandon some exercise routines or maybe leave it, you know, stop tidying around. That's in extreme cases. But if you find your, in yourself such kind of tendencies, it's like, oh, I don't feel like, like running, doing all those errands all the time. It's okay. This is where the nodes are pushing you towards Gemini. Maybe you need to give yourself a bit of a time out, roughly in the 11th house, to explore the internal world, to travel, to contemplate you know, to explore more mystical topics, to do some research, fantastic time, rather than trying to control every aspect of your everyday life. Because six houses where we try to control everything, you know, systemize, organize, well, maybe for a little bit, it's okay that you're not like that. But of course, don't become a slob, you know. <laughs> you haven't taken a shower in three days because you're studying something mystical or whatever, <laughs> or because you're just... Another case it can play out sometimes is unemployment or leaving a job, right? South Node in the sixth. So you have more free time alone, uh, free time to kind of detach or escape reality in some sort. And it is needed, but you can just do instead of always trying to work, work, it's give yourself more breaks, more holidays in the next year and a half um, to explore more invisible realms or unknown territories while um, kind of maybe you notice that your passion for work is diminishing a little bit or Ketu can indicate more spiritual work. The kind of work that you can still be focused on is of Ketu nature, something connected with astrology, with healing, with 
uh, giving selflessly, helping those in need, you know, rather than, um, or, or some people might just find themselves they're doing their work on autopilot for a little while because there are other more interesting areas they have to explore. This 12th house that we talked about, whether it's their sexuality, whether it's their dream world, their subconscious, other countries, mystical teaching or some, some research. That's why they do their errands or their everyday kind of uh, work responsibilities on uh, autopilot. Sometimes you can lose employees when Ketu is in the sixth house. You can um, lose, oh, sometimes it's, you know, uh, one good thing of Ketu in the sixth house is it can release you from debt. Because the sixth house is debt, and you might pay off a certain debt and let go of it. Plus, Ketu can indicate something from the past coming back to you. So it can indicate like a past job or a past project that you're working on. Uh, that comes back to your past health routine that you get back to something from the past. Um, and then the sixth house is pets. I hope it doesn't mean loss of a pet for some of you, but it is a possibility, one of those things. Then, if you are a uh, Cancer Sun Moon arising, the North Node will be in your 11th house for the next year and a half, while the South Node will be in your 5th house. What does it mean for you, Cancers? Uh, well, you become passionate whatever Rahu draws. Well, Rahu will be in your 11th house for a year and a half. You might become very passionate to work on some large project, big scale project that involves more people, that involves something that's been your dream. Actually, Rahu in your 11th house can really help you progress with certain long term goal or dream of yours and have very fast jump frog, like, like fast forward like a breakthrough, like uh, almost like uh, instead of climbing the mountain up to the top to this desire of yours or to this long-term dreams and goals, you can get like a shortcut of some sort. You might find some people that are very opportunistic in your social environment that help you reach such things, such goals, that have connections, for example, for you to achieve some social economic material goal. Also, it can wrap there can indicate that you Meet new people. A lot of new people, they might be foreigners, that your social circle expands. These are not necessarily very close friends to yours, but these are people in your social circle. A lot of very different, unusual people, people from a different social background, people that you don't usually hang out with or that you don't usually associate with, that you enter your environment. And that introduces a lot of new interesting ideas that kind of revolutionize your goals you know you're, we're very influenced about who our friends are and our environment about what our ambitions in life will be so because of the people that new people that enter your life your ambitions can grow because Rahu is more ambitious Rahu is more material you can for example be surrounded by more rich people by more successful people by worldly more successful people more well connected and that drives your ambition and puts you into certain circle certain circles that you've always wanted to be part of or maybe you've never wanted to be part of those circles but suddenly you find yourself in a new social and, um, circle with friends i just had rocket through the 11th house and i suddenly my group of friends a lot of new friends entered into my life and uh, it's rahu from the moon sign you know in the 11th to, and it happened that because I moved to a new country, to my old country, <laughs> but uh, I a friend introduced me to a circle of friends. So it's almost like Raku likes to appropriate others. <laughs> Something that is already done and created and built. Raku is like the cuckoo that voices egg, baby cuckoo in another, uh, to be brought up by other birds. So I suddenly received uh, 10 new friends, that fr friendships that have been built over 20 years for a friend of mine and suddenly they're all becoming my own friends, like I appropriated someone else's friendship, uh, friends ready-made. But again, you can be uh, accepted into a certain circle of friends, uh, into a circle, of certain society or club or organization, or you can join certain community. You can become very passionate about building a community, very passionate about connecting with like-minded people, about political, ideological, some other large goal. 
and that's what we're also connected with with those people they all want to be self-sustaining they want to all create those new friends that they make they all want to create a, uh, you know self-independence from state so suddenly you can find yourself participating in such uh, connections acquaintances you know uh, also your gains can rise Rahu at the 11th house is gains and rewards for work done before Rahu can suddenly uh, increase your gains or if you have a following is the 11th house if you are someone online on YouTube or if you have clients or if you have a business the 11th house is the gains from the business basically the clients of the business the followers of the business they can suddenly expand and grow quite sharply and my YouTube grew up quite a bit over the last year and a half even though Funny enough, I haven't been putting so much attention on it, but because of ideological beliefs, I guess, I don't know. Uh, you can also experience with the South Node though now. We're going to look at the South Node will be in your fifth house. And you might notice yourself that you're kind of a bit detaching from, maybe because you're developing those new goals for humanity, new large visions. You're very much interested in current events because the 11th house rules society and what's happening current trends, current events, current political developments. I went crazy with that, you know, and you'll be very interested and focus on that, but kind of like a more love life might suffer a little bit or kind of get emptied, the romantic side of life or the fun side of life. Okay, you can empty the opportunities to enjoy yourself more, for your hobbies to, um, you know, that you kind of lose certain hobbies or let go of them because you're not interested in them anymore or having fun or uh, having your things that you normally creative outputs that you find enjoyable you might not because you're so strongly involved and excitable and interested in what's happening outside in the world socially or you're working on some long-term social or economic goal of yours that's why kind of creativity and uh, having fun and going out is weakened a little bit also, maybe because you're chasing certain social goals, you might have detached a little bit from your children, you might not have so much time for them. Or maybe a child can leave your life and become independent, uh, or maybe, um, you know, Ketu can sometimes indicate some, some kind of a, uh, your child is going through a little bit more of a, a period that is more introspective, more introverted, uh, a little bit more challenging sometimes, or it can indicate Ketu trans in the fifth house if you have a new child that is very spiritual from a past life, very strong connection. Plus the fifth house is your love life. It can indicate either kind of like loss of interest towards this kind of stuff, or entertainment and partying and having fun and loss of interest or it can indicate if someone new comes into your life, there is a disconnotation of Ketu there. Very past life connection. Maybe someone from a previous lifetime, maybe someone who is, um, you know, you, when you have to complete something karmically and where it's more like a spiritual connection rather than physical. There is something more of the souls rather than so much of the physical side. And also creativity, Ketu will not stop you being creative. Ketu can direct your creativity towards more spiritual topics, for example. But for me in particular, I felt like my hobbies and creativity kind of emptied a bit because I was so busy and obsessed with what's happening in the world and with the big projects that I'm working on, Rahu in the 11th house. Um, and that's from my moon sign. I felt it from my moon sign the most, Rahu and Ketu. That's why I always tell you, check it from your moon sign, not just your sun sign or even the ascendant. Uh, and for some of you, it can mean the ending of some romantic relationships, that you let go of someone, especially if, if you feel there is toxicity there, because Scorpio can be toxic and Ketu can empty the toxicity of such kind of a romantic relationship of some sort. Or even you might empty, you might remove certain means of entertainment in your life, which is the fifth house, which are more toxic or unhealthy. And by the way, if you want to hear your full 2022 yearly prediction by me, which is two and a half hours for each of the signs and is discounted now 30% for just four or five days, check out the link below for my video horoscopes. Okay, if you're here, Sun Moon Arising, 
the nodes. The North Node is moving into a 10th house for the next year and a half. So you might find yourself becoming a lot more passionate about your career, about ambitions. Your ambitions are going to grow. There can be a big change in your career as well with something new that you've never done before because Rahu kind of allows us to become and take risks and maybe jump into a sphere of career that we're not even prepared for yet. Uh, even if you're someone who always likes to be prepared and plan, now suddenly you can jump with both legs into new waters. That's what Rahu is great at. So maybe you've always been, maybe you were a YouTuber till now, and now you can become a, you know, a financial advisor. It's a new field, you know, that can happen. Change of careers can happen. Sudden, you know, you know, something very unexpected, something very new that can happen, or a very new project that you take on in your career, or some kind of a um, digitalization of your business and career if you're own boss, because Rahu is about... Uh, innovation, digitalization of some sort, uh, new technologies, or also it can indicate that you're doing some innovations in your business or website or whatever, or that you're expanding it. Rahu can give material growth of your business. And that you're very passionate about your career, your work, you want to achieve higher positions, higher public recognition, uh, higher positions of authority, and you can become very kind of more obsessed about control and about uh, managing and micromanaging things or about positions of more control where you regulate things more in your life or in your career or you might be given such career opportunities where you have more regulatory function more control function you want to order things you want to organize them if you're if, even if you're someone who is not well organized and then uh, and uh, hierarchical and structural like I am like I you know somehow Rahu will give you this passion there to put more structure order to raise up your name out there to put out a public image that is more uh, magnificent Rahu that is more uh, charismatic and there might be some rise for you publicly you know some growth or even you might be put into positions of authority that you're not even ready for yet. You know, Rahu can do that suddenly. You jump a few ladders. Remember when Rahu was transiting my tent from the Ascendant, suddenly from working on my own, I hired 10 readers and suddenly, oh, I'm a boss. I've never been a boss before. And then suddenly, oh my God, what do I do now? I felt out of depth, but I winged it. With Rahu, is fake it till you make it. <laughs> That's the motto of Rahu. And you suddenly something with your career, with high positions uh, or, you know, authority figures as well. It might be some charismatic authority figure that appears as well uh, in your life that spurs your ambitions as well. But at the same time, Rahu Ketu will be in your fourth house, always the opposite. You might be releasing attachment to family. Some of you might release connection to roots, to the past. Um, attachment to the past some of you might leave a place of living especially because of um, other ambitions that they have worldly ambitions or career they ha might relocate when Ketu is in the fourth house they might lose interest a little bit towards parental responsibility they might lose interest towards family, home, place of living because they're focused more on the external on you know achieving things out into the world uh, chasing their goals and public reputation and image or career goals well they kind of uh, they might lose because Ketu is whatever we kind of become detached disinterested a little bit a bit bored connected with home property place of living family parenting in some extreme cases it can mean losing a parent or losing a connection with family members or something like that or moving away from them in some way but if you've been away for a long time, for example, Ketu is something from the past. Some of you might get back to a place they used to live before or family relations to reconnect with the past because Ketu likes to dig deep and explore. So it might be very good to explore your roots for some of you because Ketu is introspective influence, explore your roots. Uh, but you might have, for example, losses from property or place of living, or if you're trying to buy or sell a house because Ketu weakens the material manifestation of a house, or kind of a, but it can strengthen the spiritual manifestation of a house. 
And the fourth house is exploring your roots. It's about the psychological release of the past uh, that is coming. If, if there is any issues in your life that stem from your relationship with your parents or early childhood, your early home, Get in the fourth house will help you release those traumas and pains and psychologically feel free and not actually even disconnect from some of the family karma, release it because you kind of realize you're carrying the toxicity. For example, if everyone in your family has been getting divorced for a few generations or they have the same health problem for a few generations or they have poverty mindset or there's some feud, you know, certain pattern, you, you'll be able to release it certain pattern that has been toxic or that's been holding you back. South no trust in the fourth house, you'll be able to release. And Scorpio is also resentment, anger. If you had anger towards parents, extended family, resentment and forgiveness, Ketu can resolve it psychologically and spontaneous healings can happen because of that. But because Ketu weakens the foundation of the horoscope, look, it's at the bottom. Some of you might feel a little bit ungrounded during that time, a little bit like, they don't have roots somehow or that they don't need even roots. They might be willing to move somewhere, you know, because they don't feel such strong connection to, they feel like they uprooted a little bit and they feel like they can, they're not tied anymore to a certain place. Uh, okay. Then if you are Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, the North Node will be in your ninth house or the South Node will be in your third house. <clears throat> well, now, the North Node in the ninth house indicates that your belief systems will change a lot. You develop new belief system, you might get excited about learning something like astrology, like some higher knowledge, or you might get excited about getting a degree. Even if you're in your 60s, it doesn't matter. You might suddenly say, I want to get a degree in this higher education. Or, uh, and, and Rafa will give you quick access to that as well. And, uh, you know, some of you might just want to pre-qualify and study something very new and very different than what you studied before. Others can get very interested in science or you just, you become very much about learning, expanding your mind. And you might even meet some foreign, unusual people who also expand your mind in some way with some new kind of uh, quirky, unusual ideas, and even some new belief system. You might even want to try a different religion when Rafa transits the ninth house. If you've always been a Buddhist, you might try it, um, to be a, you know, Muslim, <laughs> the opposite, to explore certain new belief system. You might find new teachers, very charismatic, very new age. Rafa is something that is very up to date with the current times. Something that a teacher that uh, applies spiritual teaching into current life, you might really get into self help and into self development. This is the ninth house, self growth, <laughs> Le reading such literature, getting excited about taking courses, about learning about such matters can become can become very passionate about that. Uh, you can also travel more. Rafa can give you access to foreign cultures and places to explore, almost like insatiably. Because Rahu is this dragon with a mouth. It just wants to, to take in new cultures, new experiences, new knowledge, new information, new belief systems. So you become a lot more adventurous on those levels, you know. And uh, there can even be some passionate developments in a foreign country or with a foreign person for some of you Virgos. But if you're Virgo rising, now is the time for you to travel, to explore different cultures. If you cannot travel, Physically, it's definitely going to expand with your mind, with the new spiritual beliefs, with new uh, kind of knowledge, studies, degrees that you might be taking, new teachers, new inspirational figures that you discover, some seminars that you can do, or you might become very passionate about teaching. Uh, I think when Raph was transiting my eighth half, ninth house, I started teaching for the first time. I, I was like, I was so not ready, but I was kind of pushed into it because, because Rafa always likes to push us before we're ready into something way over our head. And I was pushed into it, but I'm so happy and I faked it till I made it. <laughs> so you can become passionate about becoming a teacher or teaching of some sort, or maybe if you start anything, connect, you might become, become uh, passionate about uh, import export business of some sort 
you know, and it might be very successful. Rahul can give their growth, expansion, with tourism, with import, export, high education, you know, or very like just reading spiritual literature, higher knowledge. Well, Keto will weaken the third house. You might become disinterested in those everyday people around you, the people from your town, your colleagues, your relatives, your siblings, kind of. You might even become more distant with them, disconnect from certain people that have been your mates or in your social media friends for a while. The, the ones that are quite familiar, the ones that you've had, some of you might empty their social media accounts. They might even delete them. Because that counts as your everyday communication, your everyday exchanges. A lot of them now are online, but they can be in real life, whether it's your neighbors, family, teammates, workmates, mates, friends of any sort. You might just detach from some of them, let go of them, because you're going to explore different people, nine houses, people far away from you, from different states, different cultures, different worldviews. And those ones feel more and more boring to you, those on a, in your immediate environment to those, the normal, familiar ones. And you might even detach from social media, stop watching TV, stop like kind of constantly filling your mind with the daily news and information and what's happening. And you go on a spiritual quest, or go on a quest that is thinking about way more higher topics, big ideals and visions for the world rather than everyday business, the third house. You might even find it kind of feeling bored or disinterested, everyday chit chats and normal conversations that other people might enjoy that you've enjoyed till now. Just uh, hanging out with friends and talking and, you know, brainstorming or just, you know, you might find yourself that you're either withdrawing or you don't feel seen there or you don't feel like, Let's say it doesn't feel stimulating, so to speak. You just want foreign, more unusual things as well. On a more material level, some of you might kind of south note in the third house can indicate losing uh, a friendship or a connection, or it can indicate some problems with your car or with electronic devices, phones, and so on. Just be careful not to lose phones now <laughs> in the next year and a half it's more possible you know because kids is kind of like absent-minded and third house rules all of those things you can lose them as well uh, so it's time now to develop the higher mind you'll feel more passionate about that while letting go of those every day the monkey mind this is the third house where the mind is constantly stimulated by this interest that interest that phone call that TV show, that scrolling through social media. And Keto can help you put you in a more meditative state when it's in the third house. So because Keto empties whatever it goes in the third house is the internal chit-chat. So that can be very good if you're in a more spiritual state of mind. If you're Libra Sun Moon Rising, the North Node will be in your eighth house or the South Node will be in your second house. You can gain by collaborating with others. Money can come to you from others in the next year and a half. Maybe through a, whether it's a collaboration, a business partnership, or maybe your partner can get some increase financially in 2022 or 2023 till the middle. Or you can receive some money from government or from something else. Or maybe you can start making more money from your clients, you know, in some way. Money comes to you through others. Well, you can lose <clears throat> other things that uh, you consider valuable to you now. I remember when I had this transit from my ascendant, uh, all my valuables, the second house is your possessions, valuables that I gathered for 16 years in UK, I let them go because I relocated to another continent. I gave them away, you know, so it was like a loss. <laughs> uh, but I gained a lot more. Then actually my, my income increased a lot through business partnerships. And <clears throat> so Rahu forces you or kind of will teach you to look for alternatives through collaborating with others in some way rather than just relying on yourself. And the South Node here was to give up something, something that you consider valuable, even do some spring cleaning, let go of old possessions, things from the past, things that clutter, maybe do some very big decluttering. Keto wants it very kind of emptied out. And you make a lot of space for money to come to you from other resources, to support to come to you from others. 
<coughs> sorry about that. Um, on another level, the south node can empty certain of your taste in the second house, which means you might lose interest towards certain foods or a certain, if you have, for example, some people might have food addiction. So we're all kind of addicted to food to an extent. Some might be to dairy, another to meat, another might be addicted to alcoholic beverages, another might be, and a lot of us have emotional relationship with food based on traumas and based on how we feel. Well, Ketu here uh, in the second house in Scorpio will help you detox, will help you detox from the unhealthy foods. As I said, Ketu removes the effects of a snake bite an illness arising from the poisonous matter entering one's body. And the second house is the food that we put in ourselves. <clears throat> so Ketu can help you really remove some of the poisonous foods or some of the poisonous things we put in the body and can help us detach from the desires or let's say addictive trends we might have towards certain things that we put in our body, in, in, in our mouth, in, in our health. Um, also, Ketu can help you become more detached towards money and traditional value system and release certain hang-ups and certain traumas that you have around money and poverty or release certain self-worth issues. You know, sometimes the Scorpio is a sign where we experience trauma and when Ketu trans is there uh, and trauma that we've experienced in, in your case often trauma that you have experienced often keeps you in your self-worth because the second house is self-worth where Scorpio is. How where do you find yourself? So you can find yourself that you're dealing with topics about your self-worth, worthiness and worthiness and that you're dealing with traumas that uh, cause such kind of sense of low self-esteem, self-worth. And you can empty it or heal yourself from such psychological issues. <sighs> well, <clears throat> uh, well, the North Node in the 8th house, you can become very passionate about 8th house matters, which is about resources of other people. You can even have gains on the stock market or gains through inheritance or through insurance or through some kind of um, tax break or you can get you can get very crafty rock is very crafty and clever and can go around the law in matters about taxation in matters around uh, stock markets hedge funds uh, fundraising of some sort so you can have gains and growth there with eight house matters hidden money you know some offshore or whatever because you're always the opposite of where the trends are going because everything's reversing you you can actually benefit from those eight house things. Uh, your partner can gain, your defenders can grow, or your investments in hidden money and so on. Um, uh, <coughs> sorry. Eight house is also the house of psychology. You can have some psychological, deep psychological breakthroughs with Rafa Trans in the eighth house. And um, you can become very passionate about uh, anything 8th house, astrology, dear coach. You can even start gaining or earning or growing your business uh, if it's 8th house business, which is dealing with other people's finances and resources, psychology, healing, astrology, tarot, the occult, and so on. Um, <clears throat> the 8th house is also the house of sex, one of the sexual houses. You can develop some sexual passions. So it's kind of um, Raku can intensify the boo thing, sexual experimentation. Raku really is adventurous, but also Raku can do things that become obsessive. And especially with Scorpio, it's kind of things that we do hiddenly, secretly. You know, I hope it doesn't lead to certain sexual obsessions there, whatever, but at least you can experiment more with your partner. It can also break through some sexual taboos and intimacy taboos. <clears throat> you can explore more of the mysteries of the world and you can it can be great time as well for some kind of deep investigation deep research delving deep into the secrets of the world okay if you are scorpio sun moon or rising you together with taurus are the two signs that are most strongly affected by the change of the nodes with you the south node will be very strong influence it's almost like you become more spiritual. I just had a friend who passed through the North Node transiting her first house. She was a Sagittarius Ascendant, she is. 
and she kind of became super spiritual. So for some of you, this is what it can mean, because Ketu is a spiritual influence. And she kind of withdrew from the world and she started meditating a few hours per day. And she started having out-of-body experiences, out of realms, you know, kind of very spiritual, <clears throat> a new world. <clears throat> And the invisible worlds will open up to her. For those of you who have this slant of mind, it can be when you get access <clears throat> to those invisible worlds, when you, when you can really become more spiritual than other times. And it's also pairing a, a lot of unnecessary desires when the rock, when South Nose is transit in your first house. You kind of, <clears throat> you can even become in a more sacrificial state of mind when you're willing to do more for the others and the ego, the ego, you become more egoless. Ket is very egoless, it doesn't have a head, it doesn't have an agenda. So you can peel up a lot of desires, a lot of layers of passions, and you can become more detached during this time. You, the drama can fall off gradually over the year and a half. You can detach, get detached from, because Scorp you as a Scorpio have very strong desires, very powerful, you, you feel everything like it's life and death, like it's, you know, <clears throat> in big extremes. Uh, and now Ketu is this detaching the observer influence that goes into the sign of the most powerful desires. It can make you observe it almost like a spiritual, uh, you know, the witness, they call it in spiritual circle, like you become a witness. You're in the center that is calm in the middle, no matter how wild and rough the seas of emotions around you are you can detach and you can find like you might be in the eye of the storm but you are untouched and you can discover this core witness inside so it's very spiritual you know and learn to kind of balance those extreme amplitudes of feelings but somehow the focus is a lot so <clears throat> there's a lot of focus like you're peeling layers of desire from you you're going to be peeling layers of your ego and you can become more humble even more um, you can even hide yourself a bit more you're not putting yourself out there in the center whatever keto goes in the first house we kind of withdraw from the scene a little bit we withdraw from more selfish desires or from center position center stage position what well, we give the stage to others you might be uh, play like a supportive role to your partner for a while or you might, like, when it happened to me, I stepped off a little bit from public exposure and I was just there to support my husband and also I partnered with a lot of people. I created a lot of partnership because Raku develops whatever house it goes to and for you is in the seventh house. I developed a lot of partnership and gave the stage to partners and astrology partners and colleagues of mine. So for you, this can be also... <clears throat> a wise step to do to give the mic so to speak or to uh, be play some kind of a supporting role uh, in a partnership and the partnerships are the one that pull the train because whatever Raku is this is where the energy and ambition and drive is you might even find yourself losing worldly ambition and drive for yourself kind of you know sometimes Kate in the first can even make you a bit depressed or disinterested or pathetic you're like I don't find anything interesting uh, but then someone very charismatic appears in your life. Maybe it might be a figure, it might be a teacher, it might be a partner, it might be a friend that they kind of, or it might be a business partner that they start pulling you forward. I remember I formed business partnership then that made me. I I lost my ambitiousness when Raku when Kate was in the first house, and my drive, my worldly ambition, because Kate is the opposite, is uh, kind of more introspection, spiritual going within, but then I collaborated with way more worldly driven partners. They were like pushing for sales and they were, you know, kind of, uh, <laughs> they were kind of pushing me forward. So it might be good for some of you, if you're an actor or whatever, to find an agent that pushes you forward or a partner that makes the, the if they're more ambitious and they make the <laughs> breakthroughs for you, so to speak. Also, it can indicate that your partner becomes more ambitious now, that your partner has some big growth or certain developments in their life, more, or that you, if you're single, you can meet someone very suddenly. When, when Raku and Ketu transit the axis of the first and seventh house, this is when, especially Raku in the seventh house, this is when you meet people that 
can become very important for you for the next 18 years. You can meet a friend that they will like that change your life or a partner. You can meet fated partners now as well. I've seen people get married then, people fall in love. But usually when Rahu transits there, the people that enter our life, they are um, very unusual, very different. Sometimes Rahu is the so-called polluted planet. It might be someone who's been divorced already or someone who is a foreign or from a different social background, different uh, skin color, different religion, something that is unusual to you. And uh, some, someone that I have, I was born with Rock in the seventh house and my, I married someone who's been divorced before, for example, and always married foreigners. So, so Rock can bring such more exotic people into your life and you'd find, you'd notice that you don't find the normal people around you so interesting. You find people that you want something very different. I don't know, if you're Asian, you might suddenly start liking uh, white women or, if, or men or something like that, you know, or someone from the other end of the world or someone from a very different social class. You might be a rich girl and you might fall in love that, you know, with a street smart guy. <laughs> kind of this, expect some twist there, expect something that can be a bit taboo and scandalize others, but it's going to be, nowadays not, we don't live in the middle ages, you know. Now this is kind of exciting, you know, some excitement. Wow, it's so new, it's so different. And almost like you lose your ego in this person because the self note is in your first house, you kind of peer layers of who you believe you are and uh, the inflow comes from another person that's very different than you. And because you're like a mold, you're like, you've removed your barriers. When Kate is in your first house, you remove your barriers of who you are. Uh, and uh, you kind of open up yourself, you become more vulnerable. You become like an empty slate, like a clean slate. And Rahu is where you grab from another, you take different new interesting, you know, personality traits and some kind of charismatic person that pours onto your empty slate, new prince, let's say. Also, you can gain more from business partnerships, but be careful with Rahu. There is always one danger that you can attract fake people because Rahu has faker in it. One of its law manifestations, Rahu pretended to be someone if he was not. So you can, <laughs> you might misjudge people because you jump, you get fast, so fascinated with a certain aspect of them that you don't judge correctly the whole character and you enter relationships for the wrong reasons. Maybe enter a relationship because you're so fascinated the person is so wrong or because the person has higher social status so you jump in the relationships. So oftentimes in Rahu Trans, the seventh house, we would meet people that will bring a lot of new things in our life, that will break the mold around us, but oftentimes we might act in a very inexperienced and very kind of blinded, fascinated way. Uh, and very fast. <laughs> And also agent provocateur, someone that pretends for something they are not. For example, me as a rap in the seventh house person, I've had it all my life. Often I've had a few times that someone would say that they were single and I'll date them. Turns out they're married and they have children and I'm already dating them for months. And so be careful sometimes with rap. But rap can give some amazing things. I talked about them about positive manifestation at the beginning as well. Also you can expand. You can gain more following, more clients as well, create more contracts, multiple contracts, multiple deals when Rahu is in the seventh house. But again, some of them, there might be something tricky there just to be a bit careful about. Now, if you are Sagittarius and Moon are rising, Rahu is transiting, is going to be transiting in your sixth house while the south node is going into your twelfth house. So it means that we really need to focus more on this North Node here in the 6th house. You might become uh, much more focused on work, for example. <laughs> While well, Raku transits the 6th house the next month, a year and a half. You might become quite a workaholic or obsessed with work. It might actually become very passionate about innovating your work environment, introducing some uh, new technologies into your work process, New employees, Raku can hire new employees that are very digitally savvy or new employees that are very different, very kind of unusual. You can just hire more 
help a comp. For example, when I had Rafa Trust in the sixth house, I started hiring people. I never hired people, but I started hiring a cleaner, a nanny, someone for the yard. Kind of got, went crazy with hiring people because sixth house is people you hire. And I also hired a lot of other people. I, I, I was working, I was always like doing all my administrative tasks alone, everything alone, my ads, my, not that I do ads much, but it's mostly organic, but my social media. And then I just finally hired two people, my brother and my best friend. <laughs> but still I hired someone and they do an amazing job. I, I, need, I work only three hours per week now just to record the video whenever I, I can breathe. So I've been having problems with the nerves, which affects me with like something like an asthma or something. So uh, that's why you hear me breathe so difficultly. Uh, so yeah, Saturn trans in my first house in Aquarius, the nerves, uh, my nerves are being hit hard for no reason. Uh, so yes, yeah, so Rahu can make you very passionate about such things. You can hire new employees or you can expand your business. So you can, if you, if you work with someone else, you can kind of uh, expand your influence at work. You can get some new projects. Plus you can, there can be some innovations that are happening or kind of, innovations that might feel a bit disruptive like uh, the digitalizing your business or if you have your own business you need to really do some innovations and improvements digitalize or whatever it is you know because Raku demands such things plus Raku will make you be willing to experiment when it comes to your work you might be willing to experiment by trying a new job you might swap your job seriously <laughs> many times I see that people find a totally new job employment than before and they get excited and obsessed about some new service or some new uh, employment of some sort or new job that they do. Plus the sixth house rules your health routines. You can become very passionate about your health routines. For example, working out, eating healthier, supplements. Well, I went crazy when Rahul transit my sixth house. No, with supplements, I started exploring so many different things with names that like I can't even pronounce and it was interesting experimenting for a year and a half and I understood a lot about chemistry. Six house rules chemistry. On the negative side, six house is uh, self-medication. I hope you don't start self-medicating with unhealthy things. They can, you can self-medicate with vitamins, with minerals. You know, they, they, give, they can give you almost the same high or calm down, you know, if you have mental health issues or physical stresses. Instead of drinking or taking some hardcore drugs or hardcore medi medicine, you can, because Rahu can make you do that as well. Rahu can put you on very poisonous, toxic medicine. Six houses medication, Rahu is something artificial or something uh, very, not allopathic, yeah, allopathic. So it can be some kind of poisoning when Rahu transits the sixth house from your environment, more toxicity in the environment as well. Be careful for gas around or for toxicity from EMF. It's just when Rahu trans the sixth house toxicity appears in the environment. But you can you, you can self-medicate in healthier ways. And you can become very aware about toxicity around and very passionate. Some of you might become very passionate about helping nature, helping pollution, remove pollution, how to isolate yourself from EMF influences, or how to uh, kind of remove toxicity from your life, or how to Self-medicate in a healthy way through your food, through nutrition, through supplements. And seriously, some supplements like simple amino acids and vitamins can make you feel high naturally. So. <laughs> and so on. So you can become passionate about such things. So if you're in any career that is sixth house of service, whether it's social services, whether you're a policeman, someone who resolves conflict, someone who is a lawyer in litigation, any the sixth house is any, any situation out of balance that needs resolving of a conflict. So the military, the police, uh, lawyers, litigators, social services, doctors, balancing an imbalance of disease. You might have a growth and expansion of your work, maybe too much work. If you're a healer of some sort, you know, if you're a nutritionist, fitness specialist of some sort, this can be a time of expansion of business, of growth, of passion in that direction as well. <clears throat> Unfortunately, sometimes Rafa can trigger health problems as well. And if some health problems appear to you, because it's the sixth house, the house of disease, 
often they have a rough influence which is some kind of toxicity so so it's very important to limit certain food to certain environments to find out what it is uh, certain things that might be might be allergic to or it might be certain, certain artificial substances in your environment check check for those out um, you can also benefit from a debt taking a debt on you can it can be because rock is where we can gain materially. And sometimes taking a debt, we can make more money out of it, you know. Uh, we can become very passionate about other six house topics like uh, war, crime, uh, like, uh, uh, I don't know, pollution, and so on. <laughs> Just telling you some, some topics that you might. And, and there might be definitely a lot more criticism or. Um, Criticism, let's say, around you, where, where you notice that there is more animosity that arises, but you because you're excited to learn to withhold your ground, because the sixth house, the house of enemies, and Marco there, it can bring some, uh, wants you to become passionate to, you know, to confront problems of some sort, and, and things that you consider usually difficult, you can become quite passionate of facing them, face on, front on. Well, Ketu in the 12th house, who you Sagittarius, can indicate that actually it's funny that it's very spiritual influence Ketu in the 12th. 12. 12 is uh, releasing, uh, is the past life karma, and the subconscious Ketu is to release such things. So especially because it's in Scorpio, you can release a lot of traumas from past lifetimes or from some even memories can be unlocked because Ketu removes boundaries to the subconscious. So some of you might even have memories of the past lifetimes, uh, some psychic, mystical experiences, some dreams in your, some dreams that they're releasing. I remember I was thinking about the past a lot when Kate was trans in my 12th house. I was regurgitating it a lot and thinking about the past traumas. I will dream a lot about them. It's like almost for a year and a half, every week I'll have, I'll dream about a certain person from my past that hurt me. I didn't thought they had hurt me so much, but I, for a year and a half I was dreaming of them all the time, kind of re-experiencing this pain, and then it stopped, and I don't think I have pain anymore towards this person. <laughs> it was kind of like a natural self-healing, in a sense, almost happening on a subconscious level in your dream state. Um, you might have less time, though, to be alone, less time to rest, because of Rahu do, do, doing the sixth house of dealing with worldly things, with fixing things, with keeping order, organizing work duties, these are things you'll be passionate about. While South Note in the 12th house is kind of, uh, there'll be a release, a release, a lot of psychological and emotional release, even might be very good to work with a psychologist, but it's almost like, your attention will be sucked into daily work, into material things, into, you know, dealing with such matters. So you would, uh, this kind of more spiritual things, uh, escaping reality will kind of take a second step for you. Like will become in the, you know, uh, even though a lot of spiritual healing and releasing will be happening, even healing from certain con long-term conditions, especially which are based on psychological issues. But um, yeah, so these are some of the things you might, South Note also rules 12 houses, faraway countries and places. You might have less time for holidays and breaks, so going to faraway places, so less time for spirituality or retreat of a long time, so to speak, you know. <laughs> okay, but it is what it is. You need to develop this sixth house now, and that's where you would become passionate, and it's very much about the material world, the, how you care, the, how you take care of your health, how your work that you do, how it can be useful, how you can be of service, how you can <coughs> arrange your everyday life, and so on. <coughs> Sorry about that. Then, if you have Capricorn Sun Moon arising, the North Node is moving into your fifth house. The South Node is moving into your eleventh house. Well, when the North Node moves into the 5th house Capricorn, you can expect to have more action in your romantic life. For some of you, you might fall in love if you're a single, or even if you're not, I don't know. 
you might fall in love with someone that is very different you might be willing to experiment more in love you might especially fall in love with someone who is rahu like you might be married or divorced or maybe someone who is from a foreign country someone who has different social background than you kind of some very new energy some very excitable you might even have more than one parallel <laughs> relationships or something like that Plus, you can start dating someone through online services, rock with some technology of some sort, or someone who is different ethnicity, different religion of you. Uh, you can gain back interest towards passion, towards romance, towards having fun. Or if you're in a, already in a relationship, you can kind of want to enjoy yourself more with your partner, have more fun together, do some romantic stuff uh party more you know go outside more kind of you know it's it, it's I, I like this influence quite a lot plus if you are no matter who you are fifth house is your creativity and rock there can really uh, make you even gain through your creativity you might have certain creative idea and you can capitalize on it because uh, Rahu the north node is a materialistic planet that can capitalize on new ideas on creativity on your talents your natural talents as well and you can put yourself out there in the spot or in center stage position with less fear than other times I know Capricorn is not someone usually would want to be you know like they, they even cringe from too much show off you know energy but your fifth house is triggered and fifth house has very little like energy uh and by rahu there so you might find yourself that you're really becoming more entertaining towards others you're willing to put yourself out on the spot in center positions you might even really be thrown into a central position before being ready to perform something to make a speech in front of people or to put yourself out there on social media or to teach or something, you know, you might uh, either get thrown there, you take the risk and then plunge because Rahu, you know, kind of throws us even before we're ready into something, but we kind of have the, uh, it kind of gives us the adventurousness to try it. And just like Rahu can throw you into interesting new romantic relationships that you would never have thought before to do something that is quite unusual for you something you can live like i don't take such risk and rahu will be like ah, okay we'll see now and rahu there can also create you more passion towards children maybe um, playing more like a child having more fun like a child new creative hobbies that you can discover new ways to i don't know you can discover gardening Anything fifth house is that it makes us feel alive, that we lose timing, that we get lost in the flow, that we connect to higher power through. And usually any, anything creative, whether it's gardening, whether it's building a machine, whether it's, uh, you know, whatever it's your natural talent, or whether it's knitting, whether it's, um, I don't know, uh, whatever it is, it doesn't just have to be art. That puts us in a flow and we forget time this is what the fifth house is we, we get like really in yeah exactly so you can discover such new things rapid there can give you such kind of new directions and uh, new passions that you're gonna explore even if you don't keep them forever you'll be willing to experiment maybe you know maybe you're 40 or 50 and you want to skateboard or ski or learn to, to do something else for fun. So you'll be more spontaneous when it comes down to your personal life, to fun, to romance, uh, to creative ideas as well. And you can uh, kind of, now one thing Rahu can do is you can plagiarize other people's creative ideas because Rahu has this little side to it where it's uh, not uh, against taking other people's ideas. It's uh, But sometimes, you know, it doesn't always, we don't always have to think everything new on our own. You can take it and improve it. You can take someone's ideas and improve it. Or it's not necessarily that you steal someone's idea, but you still, you kind of like you, uh, you, you kind of look from another, some kind of hobby, some kind of entertainment, you know, or some kind of idea. Again, as I said, that you can, uh, you can make your own in some way. 
All right, um, then south node though will be in your 11th house Capricorn. Whatever south node goes, this is where it kind of this weakens that area of your life. You might not have much time for your friends. Maybe because you're too into your romantic relationships and so you don't spend as much time with your friends. So maybe because of children, maybe because you're becoming more, maybe there is a new child in your life or you're more focused on your children, the fifth house. That's why you don't have more time for your social life or pursuing social economic goals of some sort. You might even lose interest towards earning, gaining, you know, uh, so much with self note in the 11th house. And uh, while you're celebrating your personal uh, creative intelligence, while you're focused on your own uniqueness. Oh, by the way, Rahu in the fifth house can give fame to some people when it transits. Can put you on the spotlight, as I said. So it can make you more entertaining, can make you more into the limelight. So if you're a performer and you're a Capricorn, especially Capricorn Ascendant, Capricorn Moon, even the sun, you know, you can get more central roles now and so on. Well, the south node here, Ketu, might uh, detach you from more contact with normal people, contact with friends. Some friends might live your life. Some friends might go away. Some friends might just, just, just some social circles. You might even leave certain groups on online, on media. And you might even decide to switch off your media. Uh, sometimes people in South North Trans, the 11th house, they just stop watching what's happening in the world with the news because they they just kind of like, I want to detach, I want to dedicate myself to my personal happiness, a North Node in the fifth house, or to my new creative ideas. The world can go to shit, I don't care anymore, I don't want to take from that. I'm detaching from the drama of the world and I'm focusing in this fifth house, my own uniqueness, my own enjoyment, entertainment, creative hobbies, you know, <clears throat> in my own bubble, whatever. Um, but also the 11th house is um, uh, gains and earnings. Some of you might kind of sometimes earn a little bit less than normal when K2 trans the 11th house because they kind of lose interest in that. Or some of you might even abandon some long-term goal or dream because it just feels outdated or it just feels irrelevant. Or they because they completed, K2 can help you complete something because you've achieved certain recognition already public and you kind of lose interest for a little bit towards those social economic goals of recognition of public acceptance of uh, gains and popularity of some sort or some of you might lose certain clients or certain followers i just had south note in the 11 from my ascendant so i'm sure i lost a lot of people a lot of followers that are you know, not uh, in maybe because I became a bit too what they would call conspiratorial, and they would say, "Oh, you're saying certain things," and big deal. <laughs> kind of like I was focused on my creative view, whatever it was, and in my inspiration. The fifth house is your inspiration. Whatever flows to you in your heart through God, this is what you also focus more. You you learn to get in touch with your own voice because the fifth house is one of the self houses and when Rahu transits there you need to learn to recognize when it's your own voice your own inspirations rather than follow what the herd is doing what the sheep is doing the 11th house is the herd it's the whole society and you know the trends is uh it might be one type but when self note is trans in 11th house you'll be like i don't care uh, I'm willing to give up the social approval. Uh, I'm uh, I don't care, you know. I want to follow my own inspiration and my own inner voice, Rahu in the fifth house, my uh, own connection to higher power and uh, my own brilliant intelligence, whatever it is, you know, because the fifth house is individual, independent, and original thinking. You know, when they say think for yourself, this is Rahu, this is the fifth house, and Rahu may, can make you become passionate about thinking for yourself. Yes, there might be a lot of delusions in your thinking for yourself. Rahu can bring delusions, and, but you are willing to explore it rather than follow the public opinion, rather than follow the herd. 
for once now it's okay for you to say i don't care what your opinion is i don't care if i lose followers or clients or whatever i'm gonna follow my passion rafu in the fifth house and that is your arrow that will lead you to the right place don't care what your friends say whether they'll say oh but you'll be excluded from society or like oh you you can't come and visit us if you don't have your green pass well you know <laughs> or the opposite way <laughs> it might be that your friends say no you don't do that and you're like no i my gut tells me and I, i'm learning to listen to my own intelligence you know so whatever it is and whatever your vision it is your inspiration for a little bit i think you'll be benefit a lot more if you follow for this year and a half your own gut your own inspiration your own vision rahu in the fifth house even if it's quirky zany and even if it threatens to alienate a lot of your social circle because i think you'll be okay with it and you'll be you'd find out at the end that the social circle that remains or the people that remain that follow you are your soul group because ketu rules soul groups in the 11th house of communities and groups so this is for you capricorn and you can also create more spiritual friendships in the last year and a half all of my i cannot before i could hang out with people just because we you know might like to drink together or might like to uh might listen to similar music or whatever or just you know just to laugh and run now i could not in the last year and a half i could only hang out with people and the only friends i made were friends that we had very spiritually similar they, they felt like a soul tribe like people i met a lot of people that we immediately recognize each other as if we've known each other for lifetimes because ketu rules past lifetimes and past life connections when it's in your 11th house of friendships you'd meet with your very likely with friends from past lifetimes or uh, like a community that a group of souls that come together you can recognize a lot of those so that's the good side you can still make friends but on a more spiritual level these are friends that you're connected through spiritual beliefs rather than for for material pleasures or for material mutual enjoyments or mutual financial interests if rahu was transiting your 11th house like for cancer i would say the opposite the friends you make they'll be you know they'll be they'll be through mutual interest through ambition but no okay to now is spiritual friendships that are happening on a soul level and detoxing through a lot of other friendships and uh connections that are no longer for you then if you're aquarius and moon arising oh that's me and i send them the north node is moving into our fourth house and the south node is moving into our 10th house very pivotal when the north node goes we experience a mini personal spring passion excitement like we haven't in a long time already rafa moved into my fourth house because if you use placidus it happened from three four months ago for me and it's very close to my fourth house cusp but it will be there for a year and a half so i became crazy about properties i've never been someone to decorate houses homes i'm still haven't finished my office you see every day there are builders here i'm designing furniture designing the garden i even like said we don't for the garden i said i'll do it on my own i don't need just just the sprinklers i will grow my food the fourth house rules all of those things you can become very passionate about growing your food having a garden about uh, building the nest that you want and that's actually since rafa started entering my fourth house this is the first ever property that is my own that is you know that i bought and i'm so you know like i can't believe it rafa can give you Uh, Rahu satisfies desires. That's what it is on the material level. And once it moves away from there, you lose the interest again, unless you naturally have it there. But I've never been passionate about decorating home properties, and I started looking to buy two, three more properties, and I've been going crazy, like looking for properties everywhere. Uh, and so you can do that. You can benefit through property. You can gain through property. If you're in such real estate, for example, it can be very beneficial. If you're in hospitality, hotels, and so on, it can be very beneficial. You can grow there. Uh, you can decorate your home. You can become very passionate to decorate your home uh, over the top or whatever. 
and I'm faking it right now. I've never been a real homeowner. I'm faking it. I'm way out of my debt because Rock always throws us in situations that are way out of my debt. I've always had small houses and suddenly this, you know, this four bedroom house. And I'm like, I almost like don't feel I deserve it. But Rafa can throw you in situations that before you're already bigger than, or you might sometimes mislead you and you buy something way bigger than you need as a house. But it's also about relocations. Many of you Aquarius might relocate to foreign places, to new places. So really take a risk about moving that you never have taken before. There can be some big change in your place of living and with family members. Rafa can expand and magnify. It can give an extra family member, for, for example. And also it can magnify the presence of parents or your parental role or, you know, because for example, I haven't lived with my parents for 20 years. I would just see them once every two years. And now they're living five minutes away. <laughs> Like they turn up on my door every day they want like I really feel rough in the fourth house their presence <laughs> it's like so in my face they materially manifested in my life so powerfully and but also Rafa can get you passionate about becoming about what kind of parent you are you might read books about parenting you might get excited about land ownership guardianship you can become more patriotic when Rafa is in the fifth fourth house you can get excited about your own country of origin, but also it's about foreign, because Rafa rules foreign places, fourth houses, place of living, so you can do such things. So you can just decorate your house in a new style with some exotic elements, introduce something new into the home, you know, introduce new members. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so you become, and also fourth house is any kind of uh, licenses. You can become passionate for licenses and things like that. Um, and so on. What else is it? Oh, yeah, you can become Raku likes to enlarge, expand. You can expand your breasts. <laughs> Some of you, if you want to have a breast augmentation, or others can uh, suddenly get a family. You know, suddenly, for example, they marry someone ready-made family because Rafa can give you something ready-made without fighting for it. For example, you can marry someone who has already a child or who already has a house or whatever, you know, like you can take some ready-made family, for example. <clears throat> On another level, uh, Rafa can ask you to explore your emotions because the fourth house is deep emotions, feelings, and Rafa can really intensify your emotions. You can kind of how you feel emotionally, you can kind of be more uh, in extreme reactions. So psychologically, you can feel a bit more intensified than other times. You can, you can feel everything with two scales higher because the fourth house is your emotional interpretation and reaction to things, your emotional peace. Rafa there doesn't really give emotional peace so much. It's turbulent. It's excitable, uh, it's restless. You can find your feelings and emotions restless as well. And you know, it's that's one of the things that and you might want to explore them a bit more somehow, you know, something, some kind of healing work of some sort. One thing to warn you though, you have to be a bit careful because Raku is also toxic substances. You have to be careful about toxic substances or EMS around your home maybe even isolate it or protect your home from such things maybe try not to have it wireless try to have it with uh, you know with cables your internet uh, try to you might become passionate about trying to reduce such influences but if you find yourself just you, if there is some way to measure toxicity of air and gas around in your home environment it's a good idea to do that because it's a small chance, but it's still a possibility. I have to mention about Rahu and the fourth house. What is it's a possibility. <clears throat> and, uh, and you can become, as I said, very passionate about parenthood, about uh, being a housewife or a house parent, or kind of uh, you can just put a lot of energy into such things. 
and I'm trying to learn to bake my own bread, to make my own garden. It's so not in my blood, it's so not in my nature, but I'm like doing my best, you know, and I'm really not doing my best. I'm really excited and passionate for once in my life about that. But then the South Note is going to be now 10th house for a year and a half. So South Note is where we kind of lose interest, where we kind of things are dying out there. And for some of you, it might be like a career that's ending. For some of us, it might be losing interest or not having enough time because we're focused more on our personal life, emotional, trying to learn to calm down emotional feelings and to, to because I told you, Raku will stimulate a lot of very intense feelings and turbulent feelings within yourself uh, and you're more focused on the personal life. Well, it can, you can feel more detached and disinterested from career. Some of you might really kind of just do their career on auto automatic. And actually, funny enough, since Rahul has been so close to my 10 house, because uh, not Rahul Ketu, I've been working less and less. I've been, uh, I always get excited about astrology. It's, it's no, it's absolutely cannot, but since it's been closing in, like, I don't know, I've been less and less able to work because of the house, because of being focused on family and emotional happiness rather than worldly achievements. Because Rahu in the fifth house, in the fourth house, makes you look for emotional happiness, emotional satisfaction. What makes your heart sing? What makes you feel peaceful? This is what your passion is. Well, Ketu in the tenth house says, because you're looking on your personal happiness and emotional groundedness that Rahu is so hard trying to find uh, to calm down. As I told you, I've also been feeling too emotional. And the problems with my nervous system and breathing, just like the feelings are just so intense, amplified by Rahu in the fourth house. But the north node in the, in the south node, Ketu in the tenth house, like you don't have time, we kind of detach from worldly responsibilities. Sometimes even a person might take time from worldly responsibilities to have to focus on the eternal world, on their private personal life and family. Sometimes this can be a time when mother takes off time from work to mother a child rock in the fourth house. Or maybe work from home somehow. But Ketu in the tenth house, sometimes some people can lose a career, abandon a job that is no longer necessary, or just, as I said, uh, do it the bare minimal or maybe a, a father figure can live one's life, or a boss figure can live one's life, or the Ketu in the 10th house. If you're in a Ketu-like career, then usually uh, it, will, it can go very well. What a Ketu-like career? Ketu rules astrology, spiritual careers, or anything that you don't do with selfish purpose, anything that is kind of like, a, almost like a spiritual calling to you because Ketu is the most selfless, egoless planet. So you might find yourself emptied from worldly pursuits and worldly desires for, for, uh, for recognition, for, but at the same time you do a lot of work and contribution to the world which is more of a spiritual nature or which is more of a, as a, without ego or without uh, goals and expectation of reward, so to speak. And I've seen a lot of scientists, for example, that were really doing the science not to become famous or to make money or to, because they invested in certain pharma companies, so they do have to do the science for that, you know, so their stocks would go up. No, scientists that are real scientists, I would see, with Ketu in the 10th house, born like that, so I've been, and, and people that did big things for humanity, but they never did it like a job, it was just like they were channeling, because whatever Ketu is, you channel higher power. So uh, Ketu in the 10th house can allow you to go to work through your career, almost like taking over your body and becoming like a you're becoming a channel for God's work, especially if you have a high vibration where you're you don't have to be an important person, you have to be a good and spiritual, not necessarily even spiritual, you have to be a good person that wants to help without ego and without motivation for ambition and control, then God takes over and the invisible forces, which is what Ketu rules, take over and they work, they work through you during such periods. 
and they remove all barriers because Ketu can remove all barriers and all resistance to even recognition, but you are not looking for it. You're just like a tool. It's not like you're passionate. I want to be, you know, I want to achieve this now. I want to be uh, recognized. I wanna, it's it's almost like you do it because you 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 are too. You feel you have to do it. You you feel there is no you know like it's it's what God wants you to do. It's something bigger than you. This kind of approach. But otherwise, you know, um, you just find yourself a bit more interested and more less driven and ambitious and if you remove Ketu or remove the uh, egoic ambition, uh, the personal ambition, but you can allow it to rise very high with Ketu in the 10th house, but if you're not doing it for personal reasons, to rise high in your career, okay. Then, if you're Pisces, last but not least, the South Node, the North Node will be in your 3rd house and the South Node will be in your 9th house. Let's start with the North Node. Where do you, where are your passions going to get inflamed and bigger? You're going to become way more passionate about um, acquiring new skills. For a year and a half, you might find yourself really like learning, studying more, learning to drive if you don't know how to drive, learning to knit, or learning to how to make a website, learning how to uh, do marketing and advertising, very technical, practical skills that can put you on the market, that can make you commercially uh, uh, successful. So, or, 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 or even for your work, you might, for example, they might introduce a new software system, you have to learn new skills all the time. But Rahu loves transiting the third house because it's, they have very similar nature. It stimulates the mind, you're curious, you're interested, I want to try my hand in this and that. You know, you, you'll be willing to try different things. For example, if, you, if you're afraid to learn the language, now you'll be like, why not? To hell, I'll try it. You know, Rahu makes you like, makes you explore unexplored territories. Um, you can also, so any kind of skills, fantastic for that. Uh, at the same time, Rahu can make you very passionate about short trips, a lot of little short trips. While Ketu empties the ninth house, which is long trips, faraway places. Uh, I just went through this transit for the last year and a half through from my sun sign. And definitely I couldn't do long trips, but I we did almost every weekend a short trip. So you become passionate about I'm I'm never one to tr plan trips, but Rafa went into my third house a year and a half ago and I was like every weekend. Uh, this hotel, let's go. This is a short trip is, you know, for a couple of days. So <laughs> you can get very passionate about such things, planning, organizing. And uh, I'm not usually one for list, but third house rules. Listen, I started, I have like 10 of those now, you know, kind of like writing everything, planning. I just like, Rafa gets you excited about third house activities, which is, um, you know, making lists, planning, scheduling. Uh, they might it might increase administrative work. It might increase the flow of information for you. You might be having if you normally your phone rings once. Rafa enters your third house. It might be ringing like ten times per day. You might be chatting with ten people per day. Or you might really uh, get passionate about working in a small group environment. Some opportunities to work in commercial business activities. You can become very passionate about marketing, advertising third house rules, such things as well, social media, uh, you might develop your social media more, for example, I knew someone that abhorred social media and Rafa transferred their third house and they kind of decided to experiment, they went on TikTok or Instagram, and <laughs> they really went everywhere and they really did quite well actually, their business really profited from that. And you might be really passionate about taking some classes and courses on practical marketing or practical skills, how to paint, how to draw, how to do pottery, how to uh, weaving, whatever you want, you know, any kind of skills that you learn by, uh, the, or how to do permaculture, how to build houses, whatever it is, new skills and learning, this is fantastic. It's not so much higher education, learning principles and new visions and ideals. No, it's hands-on practical knowledge that you're gaining. Funny enough, Rahu will soon transit my third house, Cass. <laughs> uh, 
uh, and I, I've decided to learn to drive again, <laughs> to finally get the driving license. So, so things like that you can do, uh, take courses and so on. Plus, you can notice that there are a lot of um, increased everyday interactions with others, mo maybe more than one phones, mo mobile devices. Uh, I went crazy, crazy when Rafa was in my third house from the sun. I got addicted because Rafa can get us addicted, kind of obsessive. On social media, I was just all day long on Telegram, all day long on uh, reading what's happening in the world, because the third house is what's happening immediately in, in the world, what are the news, a uh, flow of information. I was like reading three articles at the same time, jumping from one to another while the news is on, while watching, watching while I'm subscribed to, to 10 documentary channels. To <laughs> I went crazy with subscriptions for news, for information, for... Um, classes and whatnot a bit <laughs> became a little bit like a multi tasking it's, it's kind of it, it, it gets your mind very busy though it's maybe that's why my nervous condition appeared because I couldn't focus my interest but Rafa loves being in the third house makes you interested excited beautiful want to learn things you know the, the single greatest indication of youthfulness and keeping you young is when you're interested in things young people are interested in, the things that what is happening around the world. So Rahu really will bring this youthfulness to you. Just be careful, remember to do some detox from time to time, digital detox, because Rahu can really overwhelm you there. Uh, then you can you can have a lot of uh, things that are connected to writing, speaking, communicating. You might have to write a lot of messages or social media things and so on. Well, the South Node will be into your, and you can gain new associates as well with Rafa in the third house, new collaborations. Well, the South Node, which empties everything it touches, will be in your ninth house. So, as I said, it might kind of make it more difficult to have long-term, or you might lose interest to foreign travel, unless it's for spiritual reasons, because Keto allows, it does not block you. Keto does not block, it actually removes barriers, it just makes you disinterested towards it. So some of you might abandon, might leave a foreign country they're living in, or they might uh, abandon certain university degree or certain, for a little bit, certain kind of uh, higher knowledge thing that they've been uh, reading or doing. Usually I constantly read about higher knowledge, but when Rahu Ket went into my ninth house, I went a lot more into the third house, what is happening immediately in the world with me, around, you know, gain information, but with Rahu they kind of abandoned my uh, philosophical studies, higher knowledge principles and so on, and teaching a little bit, you know, unless you're teaching something more spiritual. Some of you might just uh, decide that they lose interest in certain degree that they're working on, Others, it's I don't I think mean, Kate in the nine house is very spiritual influence. I think you, you just you'll be liberated from a lot of toxic beliefs, and that can be a painful process. You'd lose uh, what you considered your worldview was. Your world say if your worldview was that always you know this is what the world is, this is how and it anchors you, it makes you feel everything makes sense, but you might have some kind of belief crisis, existential crisis, because Keto empties what you believed in, what you uh, held like pillars of morality, what is right and wrong, uh, what is the meaning of life, and it's kind of like the rug is pulled from under your feet, and you kind of feel very confused about what to believe in, what is truth, what is moral, who do I trust, or maybe you might even lose to believe in a certain someone that you've always respected and admired, like a teacher or like a teaching. Some of you might lose interest in astrology or some of you might lose and get disappointed in their faith that they were raised with. Is it Christianity? Is it Buddhism? Is it whatever? Or maybe you've been following some teacher online and you might kind of lose interest towards that teaching or kind of lose interest towards more spiritual things because you, you need to be drawn into the more this third house, your everyday environment. You know, rather than in the world of academics or uh, ideas, which is the ninth house and higher morality, you need to be drawn into the third house where Rahu is to have hands-on experience, to play in the mud, so to speak, 
and instead of just keep getting newer and newer, more and more degrees, you're never gonna have all the knowledge in the world. So just jump in and do this third house. Third house is experiment, play games, try to do it, like practical, practical, rather than just theory. Theory, third house is practical experience. Uh, try it, experiment, you know, practical skills and knowledge. And uh, to be honest, for me, it wasn't a huge thing when North Node transited the ninth south node. I didn't lose much. I just couldn't learn as much astrology as I normally do. I normally would spend hours studying astrology so on. Now, because the worldly interests grabbed me in the third house, the immediate environment interests, communication, business, administrative things, social media, news. But that's what was necessary, you know? So, Raku in the no, uh, the north node, south node in the ninth house, especially from ascendant. The nodes are most important from the ascendant. Um, can mean maybe, as I said, for me it was less international travel, uh, less uh, being able to learn less about astrology, less into philosophy, and my belief systems like were totally kind of pulverized. <laughs> like they, I released a lot of belief systems that were toxic or that were old uh, and another thing that can happen is you can uh, release yeah scorpio is toxic nine houses your mind you know your higher mind uh, i think it opens the channel to spirituality this is very spiritual influence the south node in the ninth house spiritual beliefs can you can just channel uh, messages, spiritual messages around that time, kind of spiritual uh, ideologies in a sense. So, but if you, for example, it might weaken physically uh, in your everyday life the ability to teach or to learn uh, on university level, academic or spiritual or kind of, you know, uh, teaching. The ninth house can weaken the ability to uh, or interest to travel or to uh, for higher education or I don't know it's not not a big deal <laughs> you know uh, I don't think this is a <clears throat> negative influence at all so anyway this is for all of you thank you so much oh my god this video is huge uh, this video will come back to it for the next year and a half especially around the eclipses when they come thank you so much do check out my 2022 calendar which is only for the first time 30% off, only $20, and my 2022 video for each of the 12 signs, way more in-depth than those short snippets.